Okay, I would like to get started. Um, thank you all for joining me. Um, so today, in a moment, I'm going to share my screen with you. Um, thank you for joining in. And wherever you are, just go ahead and type in the chat box in terms of where you're coming from and what brought you here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so we can get it started. Uh, here we go. So today's topic, I want to talk about uh, how mindfulness creates the foundation to confidence. So a lot of clients that I work with, um, we deal with how do you get more confident? And that's usually the number one question that a lot of people come and approach me. And they said, well, Michelle, you know, you seem very confident. How do you, how do you get it? How do you, how do you achieve to that confidence level? So then it's always interesting to, um, to hear what they're going through. And I came up with this idea of wanted to do a seminar, a webinar on this topic, because I think it's really going back, it's where I started my journey and how I became, you know, starting to discover how mindfulness really, it, it is the foundation. If you think about confidence being on the, on the top of the pyramid, mindfulness is really on the bottom. It's your foundation of how you reach that level. Um, so today's objective is really uh, broken down into a couple of different sections. Um, so what is mindfulness? We talk about a lot of, and we hear this a lot, you know, through social media, through um, some of the podcasts we listen to, exactly what is mindfulness? So we'll do a little definition and in terms of the background, where you came from, what is it, what is it about mindfulness? And next we'll go into understanding confidence and also energy level. And you might have know, or you probably don't know, that I'm an energy coach. So a lot of what I, the way that I coach is through the confidence and, and it's also about the core energy level. The next would be um, gaining more confidence and understanding by understanding what are some of the influential uh, factors that affect your energy and how that play into um, whether you have more confidence or that you don't feel have a lot of self-esteem and that therefore you don't feel that you have what it takes. So we'll go a little bit deeper in terms of understanding what are some of the influences that can impact on how you feel and how you look in terms of confidence. And then finally, we'll go into how to practice in achieving confidence. And lastly, I'll leave a couple of minutes, uh, about 10, 15 minutes at the end of the webinar to give you a chance to ask me questions. And, and if you have any um, things that you need clarification on, you, that, that would be the time for you to participate and ask questions. So um, before we begin, I just wanted to give you a little background about me. So my name is Michelle and I am a transition coach. And over the last 30 years of living with physical disability, it was from a traumatic car accident. And ever since then, I lived, I've been living in the state where, you know, I either judge myself or thinking other people are judging me. So I was not very happy about the way that my body looked. And I didn't feel that I was capable of doing any normal activities. So I began my journey of the self-actualization when suddenly life hits the bottom. And, and I think many of us probably have that experience before where you know, all of a sudden you feel like nothing is working out right and you just feel life is really just really muddy and cloudy and you have no sense of you know, clear direction of where you want to go. And that's where I was. So I began my journey of self-actualization around that time. Um, but before that, I had a great career, I have a loving family and friends, and all of that, you know, I have everything. But I still felt that I was, I was broken, and in some way. Um, so I started to practice awareness, and really looking to my life purpose. I realized that, you know, what my life purpose is, and, and that I, I have always been and always will be an inspiration to many people, who come in contact with me. Um, so I'm such an inspiration um, to many people. And 
by letting go of my own judgment and you know whether it's about myself or on other people i started to see the possibility of who i am and also what i'm capable of becoming and this is why i do what i do um, just to provide skills and also inspiration that people need so that they can become greater than than they think they are and so I founded Elevate Life Coaching in about two, in 2018. Um, and today, I basically, I help um, negative self-talkers. -talk, self and we know, we know we probably have uh, been a negative self-talker ourselves, that I help negative self-talkers to discover their inner, inner strength and their beauty so that they can actually feel confident and overcoming that fear for judgment. So that's basically what I do. And sometimes you can probably call me a judgment guru. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty accurate description of who I am. So going into our topic today, how mindfulness can create foundation for confidence. Um, I like to start by giving you a quote. So knowing yourself, know yourself and you will win every battle. And this is coming from Lao Tzu. And what that means is really knowing yourself as is the first step to mastery and also high performance. Um, knowing yourself meaning that you know your strength, you know your weakness, and also you know your light and also darkness. And who, you're, who are you being based on your conscious awareness of who you really are. And this will determine what and who you're going to attract and what type of life you will live. So awareness is really the essential first step towards that living life your way. So what is mindfulness? And we hear this a lot in terms of, oh yeah, we, we practice mindfulness and we should bring it to school. And there's lots of talk about practicing mindfulness, but exactly what is mindfulness? So mindfulness actually came from a, an Indian, uh, back in the, in, from Hinduism. And it's a Pali word that means sati. So sati in itself, in Pali word, means mindfulness. And sometimes you will hear the mindfulness being in, used interchangeably with awareness. So awareness, mindfulness, practice awareness, or practice mindfulness. Basically, it all means sati. Sati in Pali word, it means mindfulness. And, and it is defined by a spiritual or psychological faculty that forms an essential part of Buddhism practice. Um, so having the right mindfulness is really defined by that moment to moment awareness of thoughts, feeling, bodily sensation, and also the surrounding environment. <clears throat> when you are mindful, you start to observe um, your thoughts and your feelings from a distance without judging them, good or bad. And instead of letting your light passing you by, you begin to live in that moment. Um, you begin to live in that moment and awaken to the life experience. So that in itself is mindfulness. And when, you talk, when we talk about mindfulness, there's also, like I said, awareness is something that a lot of time people will use and you will hear people use interchangeably. So what is awareness? Awareness is basically broken down into a couple of different things. So awareness could be self-awareness. It could be awareness of your reality, awareness of others, awareness of the environment, awareness of the choices and options. And self-awareness is about your own belief system. Are you, how much are you aware of your own belief system, your values, your thoughts, your feelings, emotional response, and also your energy level? And awareness of the reality is what is real and what is not. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure many of you have heard this um, acronym fault, uh, FEAR before, F-E-A-R. And what it stands for is false evidence appear real and that constitutes fear. And you, you'll hear that um, acronym sometimes being used in a positive way, um, facing, facing uh, something and that's how you react. And no matter how you put up the acronym, what we're talking about is facing your reality, how you 
how you interpret your reality, how you see your reality can be very different if you are aware or unaware or unconscious about your reality. Um, awareness of the others, that include the energy, the, the, all those energy that's surrounding us and how other people's reaction or how their action or behavior can impact you. So being aware of others is also part of practice, practice mindfulness. Aware of your environment, so the temperature, is it too hot, is it too cold, is it too noisy, all of that can impact of how you respond and how you feel, what are you thinking, all of that. Um, awareness of the choice and options, whether or not you are aware of what choice in front of you or what options do you have, um, it's all part of different aspects of awareness. <clears throat> and so going further, in terms of defining confidence. So what is confidence? And, and Marian Webster really gives a really great uh, definition of what confidence means. So from the dictionary, confident means a feeling or belief that you can do something well or success, be successful at something. Or it could mean a feeling or a belief that someone or something is good or has the ability of succeed at something. And lastly, the last definition that uh, the Merriam-Webster had listed was a feeling of or, or consciousness of one's power of reliance on one's circumstances. So that is the definition of confidence. So I'd like to ask you, um, let's do a poll here. On the scale of one to 10, I want you to rate yourself in terms of how confident you are. So if you're a one, it's very low. And if you're a 10, it's very high. So go ahead and put that in the chat box for me. And, and I wanted to know like how, where, where you are on that confidence level. So take a moment and just go ahead and do that. And let me see. Cool. Okay. So we have, we have a two and we have six. All right. And we have, oh, we have a 10. Okay, we, 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 we can talk about that. <laughs> well, what would a 10 look like for you? That's very interesting. Okay, all right. And we have a seven. Awesome, awesome. Oh, so keep it coming. Great. Cool, thank you guys. Okay, so why, why do I ask yourself to uh, rate yourself? Um, well, it's really, because confidence is broken down to different, different level. And depending on where you are, you can either build from there or work on it. So level one is a very low confidence. So level one, that you may be feeling helplessness, powerlessness, fear, doubt, weak ego, or associated with very low uh, worth with performance outcome as your goal. Level two is somewhat low confidence, and that's usually on a scale of 1.5. Um, so you're not quite there too low, but you're not there at a two, so it's low confidence. Um, and what that looks like is it shows, um, it's a sign of, false bravado, and you have that feeling of inadequacy, but you look and appear that you are confident, but truly deep down, deep down inside, you don't feel that you have what it takes, and you only see challenges. Pro sometimes people have weak ego, and it's usually associated with worth, with performance outcomes, so you define your worth by what the outcome looks like. A level three would be a low to moderate confidence, and that's usually a four on a scale. And what those are, are people who on that level three would feel they have strong coping mechanism to avoid challenges, and they have strong ego. They are confident in spite of undesired outcome. So, 
whether or not they they fail or or be successful, um, they still have that sense of confidence. But they do whatever it takes to avoid um, trying, avoid so kind of like coping, coping through the situation. Level four is moderate to confident, and that's usually a six on a scale. And in level four, you start to see the good in any situation, and you have strong ego, but you're confident in spite of the undesired outcome. Um, so kind of very similar to a level three, um, except that you start to see the good in the situation rather than avoiding um, where, where if you were at level three, you would try to cope and you avoid. And level four, you start to see the good in the situation. And level five is the high confidence. And that's usually a seven on the scale. And in, in, as a level five, you start to see the opportunity in whatever happens. You will feel calm, curious. You still have strong ego, um, but confident in spite of the undesired outcome. And the key word here in level five is the opportunity. You see opportunity in whatever happens that you can still stay calm and st stay curious about the whole um, um, situation in front of you. Level six is very high confident, and that's typically an eight on the scale. And in level six, you start to see life as an opportunity, and there's no ego. Confidence is mostly independent of outcome. Whether or not you succeed, that's okay. You, you're not attaching yourself. There's no attachment to the outcome, and you don't really care what the outcome would look like. You just see life in itself as an experience and that you're just happy to go through it. Um, level seven is the absolute confidence. Absolute confidence. So, so, so the, the person who gave me a 10 before, <laughs> this is where you're at, and it's absolute confidence. And so you can create, you can create the confidence at will. Um, it's the ultimate power. And there's no ego. Confidence is completely independent of the outcome. So, yeah. So those are seven different levels of uh, confidence and energy level. And depending on where you are on that scale, you may, you may shift yourself from one to another. And the way that you, you can increase your, your overall confidence is by two different ways. So the best way is to increase your overall confidence by constantly dosing yourself with high level of energy. And how do you do that? So there's a number of ways that you can do it. Um, do meditation. You can also surround yourself with high conscious people, reading books on in, inspiring topics and people. And you can also work with a core energy coach who is expert in increasing level of energy. So those are, those are, how you can, those are the ways that you can constantly dosing yourself with high level of energy. Another way of becoming more confident is to become highly aware of all the way in which you currently are successful. So practicing and recognizing those tasks will allow you to be more aware of the way that you are already confident and able to handle whatever situation comes to your way. Um, so once you have developed that confident gene, um, it's just a matter of turning it on at any time that you choose. So what do I mean by you know, you know, becoming highly aware in the way that in which you are currently successful? Um, so basically what that means is look at your past experience and look at how, how your um, in, in similar situation that you have experienced in the past and how were you able to overcome that challenge and, and, and come to where you are today? What did you do well? There's something that you did so well that pulled you through that scenario, that pulled you through that challenge, and here you are now, you're, st you're successful, but with what? So what are your strengths in that scenario? What did you do well in that scenario? So focusing on you know, what are some of the ways that you were successful in the past, and how can you apply that in your current situation or your current challenge that you're facing? 
Um, so in other words, you're transferring your confidence from one area of the life that you're currently, that you've been experiencing now, and you apply that to another experience that you're, express, you're experiencing. So transferring confidence in one area to what you are experiencing now, and by doing that, you don't need to have the direct experience in that particular area in which you are struggling. Um, so that having that belief of your inner ability to create what you want is so much more powerful than just the outer evidence. And in order to do so, you will need to become fully aware of your own feelings and your thoughts and becoming conscious of your own surrounding and your reality, and also becoming aware of any judgment that you are holding based on your beliefs. And you can transfer those where you were confident in one area before and apply that to what you're experiencing and where your struggle is. And so this quote is really about just that. So how do you apply How do you transfer? And sometimes you don't need the proof in order to believe it. So for those who believe, no proof is necessary. For those who disbelieve, no proof is enough. So, so for someone to tell you, oh yeah, you, 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 this is how you do it and you will feel confident, but you can actually just apply what had happened. What did you do well? What are your strengths in the past? And apply that same strength with your current struggle and you already have it and that's the beauty about this whole confident thing you already have it and all you have to do is just find what worked for you what were your strengths what did you do well on and apply that same principle into the area where you are currently think that you have struggles so I typically recommend that you create a list of basically the way that in which you are currently successful and what quality do you have? What, sh what, what traits, what special traits do you have? What unique characteristic you have? And what are some of the beliefs that allowed you to experience those success? So make a list of, of those and keep it handy and and i typically so i have a section in my notebook where i um keep a list of what are my strengths and what did i do well and what are my characteristics what is my belief and i write i write that down on a page in my journal that i can keep going back and referring to it and sometimes if I'm struggling with something, I go to the page and there it is, you know, it, it's a reminder for me in terms of what did I do well? Where is my resilience? And how do I find it? It's right there on the paper. So make a list and, and find a way in which you're successful in the past and how can you apply those quality, those characteristics in your current situation. So next I wanted to go into a little bit about what are some of the influences that can impact your, your confidence. So those influencers are factors that can affect how you feel, how you, how you think, and they'll, they'll have a direct impact in terms of your energy level. And so what are some of the influence that can affect your energy? Um, if you wanna go ahead and put that in the chat box for me, and some people would put it as, oh, I see sleep. <laughs> that's a big one <laughs> yes uh, um that's a lot of people feel like you know they're sleep deprived and that can definitely ruin your energy so that's a great one yep uh-huh and and too hot yeah sometimes the uh, the temperature in the room sure and also yeah okay hmm spiritual faith having believing in god yes spirituality absolutely friends yeah friends who bring you down sure <laughs> i love that <laughs> so yeah you were all right I and mean, there's a lot of different uh, factor that influences our energy level and those are stress like i said something that's mentally um, um stressful and that can cause us to 
experience a lot of worry, our fear, our doubt, and typically it's associated with lower level of energy. And it's a distraction from being confident. We can also be impacted by the environment. Like I said, it could be too hot, too cold. Is the room too, too, too much uh, noise? Is it too tight? You know, people who have claustrophobia, they, they may feel that, you know, the room is too tight, too small. Everything can bring our energy down. If you walk into a interview and, you know, the environment doesn't feel welcome, and of course, you may not feel confident the minute that you walk in. So it makes sense. Physical, do you have enough sleep? Are you having a flu? Are you experiencing some illness? That can all impact on how confident you feel and look. Spirituality, we spoke about faith. Um, sometimes spirituality, it doesn't have to be about religion. It could be, you know, your overall connectivity to the higher power. So it could be how connected you are to your higher higher power or faith. Um, emotional, emotional after a fight, you might have a fight with your spouse the night before, and of course, you walk into the interview the next day, you don't feel confident. Or, you know, if you have an argument at, at work and someone is bringing you down and someone is making you small, then you don't feel confident. And we all have, experience where we interact with people who kind of just feel that they're belittling me or belittling, belittling us and therefore you don't feel very supported you feel small and makes sense why you wouldn't have a lot of confidence so after a fight or someone's picking on you all of that will influence your energy social um, how inspiring your friends are or your family. If someone is always putting you down, they don't believe in you. So it can also impact on how confident you are. So how do you practice in achieving confidence? Um, so just before I go into that, you know, there is a, a lot of what I spoke about has to do with um, how you see yourself and how you see others. So I actually have a prepare a seven days of judgment detox for everyone. And it's a free download. You can download it, spend some time and work it at home and go through the exercises that I have on the judgment detox. And it's going to help you loosen up the way that you see yourself, the way that you judge yourself, and also the way that you see every, everything that's around you. And once you loosen up on that judgment, you'll be surprised how much confident or how much more confident you become in terms of who you are, because then you start to see the real side of you without judging yourself. So it's free download and you can download it, download a copy of it on my website, elevatelifecoaching.org. It's completely free. Once you go to the website, you can click on free download. It's gonna take you to another page and it's gonna ask you for your first name and your email, and then you will get it into your um, email inbox. And you'll get, every day, you'll get a copy of the worksheet that you can do it at your own pace, basically. And you're welcome to respond to that email and interact with me if you have any questions. I welcome you to uh, ask me any questions. Uh, but that's for you to take it home, and work on it for yourself. How do you practice achieving more confidence? So confidence is really an internal um, capability. And instead of waiting for something good to happen to bring confidence, you can choose to create it. And even in the face of adversity. So we all have different situation we all have life experience that we stand there and we're not sure how to how to see it sometimes we'll label it good sometimes we'll label it bad um, but the confidence is always being it's always there it's your inner capacity it's your inner ability inner strength and so instead of waiting for something else to happen in order to have confidence know that you can actually 
choose to create it. You can feel confident and by letting go of how you see yourself, judging yourself and how you judge the situation or judging others and how they react to you or respond to you and vice versa. So you can create that confidence just right here and then. And when you are confident and aware of the seven level of energy, you can choose to respond in any situation. So you can, in other words, you can summit the, your feeling of success, your peace, power and calm, regardless of the circumstances. And that's really part of the resilience that many people are talking about, that sense of resilience. And it's the ability to recover from a setback and you start to create each moment that you desire. So in other words, when you trust yourself, you become aware of and accepting your thoughts, your emotion, your physical feeling, and all aspects of yourself. Confident is not associated with uh, accomplishment, but rather it's being in a state that is associated with just trusting yourself, knowing that you can handle whatever comes your way and that you don't need to know everything right now. And it's that sense of trusting yourself that you got what it takes and also just trusting the process and knowing that you can handle, you're capable of handling whatever comes in your way. And by that doing that, becoming aware of that, you actually can, you actually create that confidence that you need. So in other words, by expanding your own awareness, you can become aware of what helps you to perform at your best, as you will have significant more information about the life that you're creating, also your beliefs around what you're doing. And you don't need to, um, you don't know what you don't know, right? So if you are not aware that the light is off, for example, you won't even think about turning it on. And in order to turn on the light, you have to be aware. And once you are aware that you are in the dark, then you know what you need to find the light switch. If you're aware of what is off, then chances are you'll begin to search for the switch to turn it on. So in other words, you need to be aware of where your energy level is and know how to adjust your own energy and your own performance so that you can tap into what works for you, what made you successful in the past, applying all those strengths in your current struggles, and therefore you already have the confidence that you need. So awareness really creates a lot of, um, it's a really found, solid foundation of how you build on your confidence. Becoming aware of what your current situation is, becoming aware of who you are, and becoming aware of your environment, your surrounding, can all help you in achieving that confidence level that you're looking for. Um, so you can find me on elevatelifecoaching.org or you can follow me on my Facebook or my Instagram. And if you have any questions, you can go ahead and email me at michelle.kui at gmail.com. And, you know, I like to open up, we have about 10, 15 minutes left. I like to open up our floor to some questions and we'll go from there. And thank you so much for coming and joining me on this beautiful Wednesday evening on how mindfulness can create the foundation to confidence. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and let you ask me questions. <laughs>